Prophetic Royal Coat of Arms Ministry, the Reformed Pentecostal Anglo-Saxon and Royal Empire of the Kingdom of God denomination. Our Sunday worship service at 11 a.m. Our Thursday night Bible study at 7 p.m. I am Her Imperial Royal Highness Archduchess of Pomerania and Livonia and of the House of Hanselin the Right Reverend Victoria L. Maxwell, Bishop of the Prophetic Road Coat of Arms Ministry, Field Marshal of Pomerania and Livonia, Knight Templar of Livonia, Knight of the Sacred and Military Order of Merits of Livonia. And we are a ministry that stands up against the apostasy of dispensationalism, a ministry that accepts gays, lesbians, and transgender people let's pray because i got a good message for you today if god willing god willing <clears throat> dear yahweh atomai elohim we come before you and uh ask you to bless this message and empower us to move into the apostolic and the prophetic and grant us wisdom and knowledge concerning the subjects we will be looking at today That we'll be looking at. Let my preaching and teaching be acceptable to you. We we'll cast every negative and evil spirit out of our lives. Pray you would keep us safe in your holy trinity today, tomorrow, and the following day. We pray and ask in Christ Jesus' name through the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray that you would cast every negative and evil spirit out of our lives today, tomorrow, and the following day. In Christ Jesus' name, we ask through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> the name of this message is Hot Mess. Life Hot Mess 2. Name of this message is Live Hot Mess 2. Oh, uh, we just pray you'd energize us and uh, we repent of our sins of omission and commission and ask you to forgive us and cleanse us from all righteousness. In Christ Jesus' name we pray and ask for the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. One Peter two colon one dash twenty five. So get rid of all malicious behavior and deceit. Don't just pretend to be good. Be done with hypocrisy and jealousy and backstabbing. Two, you must crave pure spiritual milk so that you can grow into the fullness of your salvation. Cry out for this nourishment as a baby cries for milk. Three, now that you have had a taste of the Lord's kindness. Four, come to Christ, who is the living cornerstone of God's temple. He was rejected by the people, but he is precious to God who chose him. Five, and now God is building you, as living stones, into his spiritual temple. What's more, you are God's holy priests, who offer the spiritual sacrifices that please him because of Jesus Christ. Six, as the scriptures express it, I am placing a stone in Jerusalem, a chosen cornerstone, and anyone who believes in him will never be disappointed. Seven, yes, he is very precious to you who believe. But for those who reject him, the stone that was rejected by the builders has now become the cornerstone. Eight in the scriptures also say, he is the stone that makes people stumble, the rock that will make them fall. They stumble because they do not listen to God's word or obey it, and so they meet the faith that has been planned for them. 9. But you are not like that, for you are a chosen people. You are a kingdom of priests, God's holy nation, his very own possession. This is so you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. 10. Once you were not a people, now you are the people of God. Once you received none of God's mercy, now you have received his mercy. 11. Dear brothers and sisters, you are foreigners and aliens here. So I warn you to keep away from evil desires because they fight against your very souls. 
Well, be careful how you live among your unbelieving neighbors. Even if they accuse you of doing wrong, they will see your honorable behavior, and they will believe and give honor to God when he comes to judge the world. 13. For the Lord's sake, accept all authority the king is head of state. 14. And the officials he has appointed. For the king has sent them to punish all who do wrong and to honor those who do right. 15. It is God's will that your good lives should silence those who make foolish accusations against you. 16. You are not slaves. You are free. But your freedom is not an excuse to do evil. You are free to live as God's slaves. 17. Show respect for everyone. Love your Christian brothers and sisters. Fear God. Show respect for the king. 18. You who are slaves must accept the authority of your masters. Do whatever they tell you, not only if they are kind and reasonable, but even if they are harsh. 19. For God is pleased with you when, for the sake of your conscience, you patiently endure unfair treatment. 20. Of course, you get no credit for being patient if you are beaten for doing wrong. But if you suffer for doing right and are patient beneath the blows, God is pleased with you. 21. This suffering is all part of what God has called you to. Christ, who suffered for you, is your example. Follow in his steps. 22. He never sinned, and he never deceived anyone. 23. He did not retaliate when he was insulted. When he suffered, he did not threaten to get even. He left his case in the hands of God, who always judges fairly. 24. He personally carried away our sins in his own body on the cross so we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. You have been healed by his wounds. 25. Once you were wandering like lost sheep. But now you have turned to your shepherd, the guardian of your souls. One Peter three colon one dash twenty two. In the same way, you wives must accept the authority of your husbands, even those who refuse to accept the good news. Your godly lives will speak to them better than any words. They will be won over to you by watching your pure, godly behavior. Three, don't be concerned about the outward beauty that depends on fancy hairstyles, expensive jewelry, or beautiful clothes. For you should be known for the beauty that comes from within, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is so precious to God. 5. That is the way the holy women of old made themselves beautiful. They trusted God and accepted the authority of their husbands. 6. For instance, Sarah obeyed her husband, Abraham, when she called him her master. You are her daughters when you do what is right without fear of what your husbands might do. 7. In the same way, you husbands must give honor to your wives. Treat her with understanding as you live together. She may be weaker than you are, but she is your equal partner in God's gift of new life. If you don't treat her as you should, your prayers will not be heard. 8. Finally, all of you should be of one mind, full of sympathy toward each other, loving one another with tender hearts and humble minds. 9. Don't repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate when people say unkind things about you. Instead, pay them back with a blessing. That is what God wants you to do, and he will bless you for it. 10 for the scriptures say, If you want a happy life and good days, keep your tongue from speaking evil, and keep your lips from telling lies. 11 turn away from evil and do good. Work hard at living in peace with others. 12. The eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the Lord turns his face against those who do evil. 13. Now, who will want to harm you if you are eager to do good? 14. But even if you suffer for doing what is right, God will reward you for it. So don't be afraid and don't worry. 15. Instead, you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if you are asked about your Christian hope, always be ready to explain it. 16. But you must do this in a gentle and respectful way. Keep your conscience clear. Then if people speak evil against you, they will be ashamed when they see what a good life you live because you belong to Christ. 17. Remember, 
It is better to suffer for doing good, if that is what God wants, than to suffer for doing wrong. 18. Christ also suffered when he died for our sins once for all time. He never sinned, but he died for sinners that he might bring us safely home to God. He suffered physical death, but he was raised to life in the spirit. 19. So he went and preached to the spirits in prison. 20. Those who disobeyed God long ago when God waited patiently while Noah was building his boat. Only eight people were saved from drowning in that terrible flood. 21. And this is a picture of baptism, which now saves you by the power of Jesus Christ's resurrection. Baptism is not a removal of dirt from your body. It is an appeal to God from a clean conscience. 22. Now Christ has gone to heaven. He is seated in the place of honor next to God, and all the angels and authorities and powers are bowing before him. Verses 1 through 3. Stop being hateful. Quit trying to fool people and start being sincere. Don't be jealous or say cool things about others. Be like newborn babies who are thirsty for the pure spirits of milk. That will help you grow and be saved. <clears throat> you have already found out how good the Lord really is. Well, this is written to the church scattered abroad in Asia Minor. Uh, Peter's letter and basically those verses are telling us to uh, basically start seeking to be sincere in our walk with God sincere to God sincere to one another our duties to God and one another, the first commandment, love God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. Um, for us to seek uh, spiritual milk, so we'll receive nourishment and grow more and more in our walk with the Lord. We've been saved, being saved, and we shall be completely and fully saved one of these days, glorified. Mean, saved meaning basically more and more liberated through the regenerating, sanctified work of the Holy Ghost of uh, our old nature developing the new man in us becoming more and more like Christ Jesus stop being a hater meaning stop being prejudiced towards gays lesbian and transgender people treat transgender women like they want to be treated like women consider them women accept them as women fully and completely don't be a hypocrite a play actor which hypocrite uh, Hypocrite means is a play actor saying it publicly, all the right things, but internally meaning, but internally inside hating that person because they are the way they are. <clears throat> like a transgender hating them, not considering them. See, it's easy to say. that you accept people and communicate it not to offend people not to offend them to say all the right things say all the 
proper decorum that's due to each other in society, being polite, respectful, and so forth. No, that means stop hating. <clears throat> that means that your heart needs to change. That means you need to not only say it, but actually believe in your heart to love the person as an individual created in the image of God, to accept them for being a transgender woman, consider them a woman, treat them like a woman, accept them as a woman, accept gays, lesbians, and transgender people the same way, obviously, same for the opposite, treat gen transgender men like, tran like men, and actually believe it in your heart, seek God, so that he will make you more and more sincere and rescue and liberate you from all that hate that was built up in your hearts over the years by circumstances, situation, hurts, pains, so forth. That includes uh, justice in society, being fair, creating a society that is fair, just to gay, lesbian, and transgender people. That means doing everything in your part sincerely to rid society from institutional racism, institutional sexism, prejudice towards gay, lesbians, and transgender people. That means fight for transgender people's rights to use the bathrooms that correspond to their gender identity, not with the parts that they were born with. Because I hear arguments all the time, well, what if someone goes inside the bathroom and pretends to be this and that? Uh, very seldom, statistically, does that ever happen. So it's just a clever way of creating institutional prejudice towards transgender people. It can't be for, you know, gay, lesbian, and transgender people uh, to get married and all those other things and then but on this part I don't want the person using the bathroom that corresponds to their gender identity but uh, only with the parts that they're born with that is not total equality for transgender people on transgender women, transgender men, it's all about integration. Being, me being a transgender woman, it's all about them integrating in society as a woman 100% completely. And so we need to get rid of all that hypocrisy and seek God to transform and change us and make us sincere to him and our duties to one another. And the only way to do that, obviously, is to seek Him through prayer, praise, and proclamation of the gospel, studying the Word of God, and so forth. And allowing the Holy Ghost to change our hearts and minds slowly and gradually. Verse 4 and following, come to Jesus. He is the living stone that people have rejected, but which God has chosen and highly honored and now you are a living now you are living stones that are being 
used to build up a spiritual house. You are also a group of holy priests, and with the help of Jesus Christ, you will offer sacrifices that please God. It is just as God says in the scriptures, look, I am placing in Zion a cho choice and precious cornerstone. Um, no one who has faith, no one who has faith in that one will be disappointed. You are followers of the Lord and that stone is precious to you but it isn't precious to those who refuse to follow him they are the builders who tossed aside the stone that turned out to be the most important one of all they are they disobeyed the message and stumbled and fell over that stone because they were doom but you are god's chosen and special people you are a group of royal priests a holy nation god has brought you out of darkness into his marvelous light now you must tell all uh, must not, <clears throat> you, now you must tell all the wonderful things that he has done the scriptures say once you were nobody but now you are our God's people at one time no one had pity on you now God has treated you with kindness who <clears throat> is the uh, that people rejected to place in Zion well that was Jesus Christ when he came to the earth 2018 years ago to bring salvation to his elect and very elect through his death, burial, and resurrection. But, apostate house of Israel and Judah rejected him and his message. Some believe that he was the true Messiah, others did not. And they crucified Jesus, and Jesus Christ brought judgment upon them in 70 AD with the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem in 70 AD. And they were punished for their apostasy towards God's followers. And God brought judgment and scattered the house of Judah and regathered them back to himself back to the covenant of grace that he made with them and his elect through his death, burial, and resurrection it served a stumbling block for them But to those who, including the house of Judah, God's elect from the house of Judah, and the uh, descendants of the sixth day creation, and the obviously house of Israel, God's elect there recognized him as the one and accepted him as Lord and Savior, as precious to them. But then there was the other part of the apostasy of the house of Judah, the Pharisees and Sadducees with their apostasy. They were punished for their apostasy. They were punished for putting Christ to death. They were punished for rejecting him as Lord and Savior, valuing, valuing their system that they had set up more than the one that it's all about the types and shadows that point to Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior and uh, well 
They got what's coming to them, the good, the bad, the ugly, basically. And then they were scattered, and then God regathered them. Slowly and gradually, they were the house of Israel, the house of Judah. They were called to be builders of God's spiritual temple, his holy temple, his holy empire, his worldwide empire. The church, God's elect and very elect, built on the apostles and prophets and Jesus Christ, building uh, foundation built on the apostles and prophets and the cornerstone of God, Jesus Christ being the cornerstone, basically the foundation that, by which the house of Israel and the house of Judah were called to build from, not build their own uh, whatever they built to give them, I don't know, social status or whatever else that they got from it. The elect and very elect are uh, the stones, the spiritual stones of that temple, that empire, that church, his church, his empire of his elect and very elect. We are the stones of Israel, spiritual stones, which we are a part of, and at this very moment since Christ's ascension, until his return, those stones, that temple, that empire, that church will continue to be built up. And us being a part of that uh, very special thing that we're a part of, God's elect and very elect is a part of. Um, Christians sometimes speak of the priesthood of all believers. In the Old Testament times, people did not approach God directly. A priest acted as an intermediary between God and sinful human beings with Christ's victory on the cross that pattern changed now we can come directly into God's presence without fear and we are given the responsibility of bringing others to uh, and we are given the responsibility of bringing others to him also when we are united with Christ as members of his body. We join his priestly work of reconciling God and man. So, uh, take a look at uh, uh, 11 through 17. Dear friends, you are foreigners and strangers on the earth, so I beg you not to surrender to those desires that fight against you. Always let others see your behavior properly, even though, excuse me, though they may still accuse you of doing wrong. Then on the day of judgment, they will honor God by telling the good things you, good things they saw you doing. The Lord wants you to obey all human authority, especially emperors who rule over everyone. You must so obey governors because they are sent by emperors to punish criminals and to, and to praise good citizens. God wants you to silent stupid and ignorant people by doing right. You are free, but still you are God's servant and you must use your freedom as an you must not use your freedom as an excuse for doing wrong. Respect everyone and show special love for God's people. Honor God and respect the emperor. So, it says we are to obey rulers and so forth. Obviously, it's talking about civil authorities that 
we find ourselves in, in whatever country or society we are that have laws and rules. Now, at the same time, as the scripture says, if those laws and rules go against God's moral and civil law, we are called to obey God rather than man. That's why we got such things such as disobedience and whatever things we have to uh, means that we have uh, that are necessary and uh, restoring, I guess, restoring the proper order in society, fair and just laws, laws that line up with God's moral and civil law. And uh, like I said, we need to focus on being sincere, living and serving God, following our responsibilities of obeying God's moral and civil law, uh, love God with all our hearts, minds, body, and soul, and love our neighbors as ourselves, all you know ourselves, you know, and. Uh, not just be hearers of the word of God, but do, be doers of the word of God and go out and do good for society, our world. And, uh, well, need to, you know, conduct yourself in a holy and godly manner. So those people who are not saved will be like, hmm, there's something that person has that I want to see, want to know about, or like I said, when the day of judgment comes, uh, at the resurrection, some everlasting life, some everlasting destruction. They can be like, well, I saw this person. He, you know, he did really good. You know, because we're called to. We are saved by grace, justified by faith. We won't save the works, not meritorious works. So, works we uh, works we do are for you know, for the things we do in the body of Christ, not efficacious for our salvation. Our works are sewing the very robes of the fabrics. Of, uh, our works are sewing the very f uh, fabric of the robes we shall wear in the third world age and heaven age. Eighteen through twenty-five. Everyone has a job. So we must do what our bosses tell us to do, whether they're good or bad to us. We must do as our bosses tell us to do, do our job right. Be just and fair in our conduct, in our behavior at work. And Obviously, you know, we don't want any, what do they call it? What do they call it? Work rage or something where, you know, someone just goes nuts at work and, you know, whatever. You must follow the example of Christ. And obviously, God will bless you with, you know, temple blessings and, you know, rewards and blessings in the new heavens and new earth, the third world age and uh, heaven age. And Christ suffered through all the imaginable pain.
for us so we might have life and have life more abundantly through Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. So we have God's example laid down for us to follow, be, keep our responsibilities, our duties to God and one another, even at work, bang, our bosses at work. They're, in this sense, your masters and your, their slaves, basically. And you got to make a living, you got to feed yourself, you got to put food on your table, whatever. So uh, just follow Christ's example and do it for him, don't do it for them. Um, like I said, receive a blessing, some temple blessings, and especially eternal blessings in the new heavens and new earth, the third world age and heaven age, the eternal state. No. Now we're starting to the last part of First uh, Peter chapter two and three. Uh, last part of First Peter chapter two. We're starting to get into delegated authority, and the first part of First Peter chapter three. We're getting continuing on delegated authority verse uh, first Peter chapter 3 verse 1 and following if you are a wife you must put your husband first even if he opposes our message you will win him over by what you do no one no one else will have to do uh, scratch that thought here for a minute we're going to use a different translation briefly on this the NIV says all right starting in verse one uh, wise in the same way, be submissive to your husband, so that if any of them do not believe the word, they believe the word, they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives. When they see the purity and reverence of, the, of your life, your beauty should not come from outward adornment such as braided hair and the wearing of gold jewelry and fine clothes instead it should be that of your inner self the unfading beauty of gentle and quiet spirit which is of great worth in God's sight <clears throat> for this is the way the holy win, uh, women of the past who put their hope in God used to make themselves beautiful. They were submissive to their own husband like Sarah who obeyed Abraham and called him, called him her master. You are her daughters if you do what is right and do not give way uh, you do not you do what uh, you are her daughters if you do what is right and do not give way to fear husbands in the same way be considered as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and uh, and as heirs with you of the gracious gifts of life so that nothing will hinder your prayers word submissive 
in the Greek is to place or rank under to subject to obey I don't mean to you know run through this really fast we will backtrack in a minute just got a lot of stuff to cover in this you know this time we have in this message uh, this is a part I don't like the first Peter chapter 3 etc passage of scripture and I've taken various other positions on this throughout my life but as I look at it closely it basically means what it means you know basically means husband's boss and uh, me being a tra heterosexual transgender woman that applies to me as well the husband's the boss in the marriage and <laughs> it's a hard word to swallow but it basically means that our husbands are the boss in the marriage there's no getting around that fact but again husbands are to treat their wives with respect and love and we are to love our husbands as well and it has to be biblical godly love and respect and submission and when it says talk about fine jewelry and all those kind of things it just simply means that women need to have a present themselves in a positive positive sexuality rather than a negative sexuality basically it also mentions that you know by if we are married to a non-believer non-believing husband you know living a godly and holy life as a Christian woman can lead to conversion for them and again there's various still in place in God's moral and civil law for divorce obviously Moses's law based on divorce still applies today so divorce is not the unpardonable sin there's circumstances situations precepts principles so forth for divorce like say your husband's abusive or whatever divorce you don't need that old lousy husband and so forth and uh, so don't misunderstand me like I said God the grounds for biblical divorce still apply uh, today from the Old Testament under God's uh, civil law even moral law even to Ten Commandments look at verses 8 through or 8 and following follow finally all of this is back at the contemporary English uh, finally all of you should agree and have concern and love for each other you should also be kind and humble don't be hateful insult people just because they are hateful and insult you instead treat everyone with kindness you are God's chosen ones and he will bless you the scriptures say do you really love verse 10 do you really love life do you want to be happy then stop saying cruel things and quit telling lies give up your evil ways and do right as you find and follow the road 
that leads to peace. The Lord watches over everyone who obeys him, and he listens to their prayers, but he opposes everyone who does evil. Can anyone really harm you for being eager to do good work, good deeds, even if you have to suffer for doing good things? God will bless you, so stop being afraid and don't worry about what people might do. Honor Christ and let him be the Lord of your life. Always be ready to give an answer when someone asks you about your hope. Give a kind and respectful answer and keep your conscience clear. This way you will make people ashamed for saying bad things about your good conduct as a follower of Christ. You are better off to obey God and suffer for doing right than to suffer for doing wrong. Christ died once for our sins. An innocent person died for those who are guilty. Christ died. Christ did this to bring you to God when his body was put to death and his spirit was made alive. I'm even saying the word submit to my husband. I dread even saying it out loud. <sighs> but, you know, our outward appearance doesn't make us beauty, beautiful. It's seeking God, serving and living for Him, seeking Him with all our hearts and minds. Our duties to God and one another that beautifies us outwardly. God develops godly beauty in us as we serve and live for God, our duties to God and one another. And we should, even myself, I try to uh, present a positive sexuality rather than a negative positive sexuality um, try to avoid really heavy makeup caked on makeup I try to avoid you know the 80s look with the big hair basically I want my makeup to look as natural as it possibly can look try to present myself positive sexuality and uh, said I'm a pre uh, pre op transgender woman so I'm suffer I suffer from gender dysphoria all the time never thinking I'm feminine enough or girlish enough or lady enough or whatever and stressed out and angry and mad at it, mad at that fact constantly. But uh, I just got to realize that all us women come in all shapes and sizes, you know. There's no one size fits all type of woman. But if we seek God's holiness and righteousness, living for Him, serving Him, you know, trying to be godly, to one another, um, be not just hearers of the word, but doers of the word of God, seeking Him, seeking Him through prayer, praise, and proclamation of the gospel, and studying the word of God, and so forth. He will beautify me and beautify you, cisgender women, you cisgender women, you transgender women. And so this is this is the secret to looking feminine and beautiful right there in that passage of scripture for a cisgender woman and a transgender woman, a heterosexual transgender woman, which I am 
and proud of it, and not ashamed of the fact that I am a heterosexual transgender woman. Today, I think I'm looking pretty good today, you know. Uh, some days it's just, you know, whatever. So those last passages of scripture that we're going to be looking at today just simply means that we need to take the moral high ground when it comes to the persecution, prejudice, racism, sexism that we as God's elect and very elect will uh, encounter on a daily basis. The institutional prejudice towards gays, lesbians, and transgender people in society, um, institutional racism, um, institutional sexism that is in society, personally and corporate in our daily lives. But we need to seek to be, to stand the moral high ground and not lower ourselves to their level, but to rise above our circumstances and live our lives personally and corporately as God's elect and very elect and play a role in our part in Christianizing the whole entire world, our strength, the golden age of peace and prosperity. It doesn't mean that we don't need to be activists in society and use whatever means are necessary to make changes in society, but we need to respect and love people who are created in the image of God and recognize that. We need to moral high ground. <clears throat> we need to not join them or say, if you can't beat them, might as well join them, which can cross our minds as God's elect and very elect in society in our lives when we are feeling down and low and well I think the best remedy to mainly this stuff is uh, to seek God in prayer and uh, I was actually looking for an answer oh, a couple of days ago for a few days because I've been kind of down and de uh, depressed and dumps because uh, I don't think there's a lot of negative and evil spirits that have been attacking me lately. Getting angry, mad, upset. Yeah, I was telling you. Yeah, good for a minute. Yeah. And then, I don't know, I just got depressed again, you know, I've been, you know, depressed a lot lately, and I it's because a lot of negative and evil spirits have been attacking me lately, trying to bring me down, trying to crush my spirits, I think. <sighs> Could be some really nasty hate churches praying that uh, I repent of my sins of being a transgender woman or something. Uh, and there's been a couple of times where I felt like just giving, throwing the towel in and just saying, why am I trying to be, why am I trying, why, what use is it trying to live my life as a transgender woman when I can't even get people to accept me or treat me as a woman in society and how do you become friends with people whose politics you disagree with and knowing that their politics are unjust and unrighteous and un ungodly <clears throat> and well you can and you gotta try to practice true uh, tolerance you know but uh, 
I just felt like giving him the towel lately on it. Just so depressed, so down and out. And I think it's because people, some of them hate church haters, been praying at some of them hate uh, church haters, been praying that I, my life gets all screwed up, so they'll put me in a position to repent of my sins and repent of my transgenderness or whatever the heck they think my deal is, uh, or whatever, or just. Or just plain old negative and evil spirits attacking me. Which really has been stressful on me, bringing me down, making me angry and mad, and even sometimes the word I'm looking for not taking the moral high ground like I should and so I just pray that you folks if you're joining me just pray that you would uh, pray that those negative and evil spirits will stay out of my life and Jesus in the name of Jesus they'll crush them yeah, you know, the church, you got churches, and you got, you know, like you see the cornerstone that the became a stumbling block, you know. And that's true today, you know. You got a lot of churches out there building churches on based on hate and racism and sexism and prejudice, or gay, lesbians, and transgender people, you know, because... Basically, they don't know what the Bible teaches, really, you know, and so they take their position on what they take, and they like their little, neat little packages and work on and so forth, and that ain't how God works. They need to seek Him through prayer, praise, and proclamation of the gospel. They're studying the Word of God, and let Him teach us what the Word of God says. And you can't... You know, argue people into the kingdom of heaven, no matter how hard you try. You can come up with the best arguments and so forth, but, uh, and I'm discovering that people just, for the most part, don't think rationally, logically, at all in society. They act emotionally. Emotion, negative emotions win the arguments for them in their lives. But you still have to give an answer for what you believe in and out of season for the hope you believe. And then pray that uh, that God that, that you plant that seed and it, it'll grow and uh, prosper and got to water and I don't know. Something awesome will happen in their life and you know, they'll repent of their sins of sin, of their sins of omission, commission for, you know, backsliding if that's their issue is, or, you know, accept Christ as their Lord and Savior and, you know, start living for God, I guess you might say. That doesn't mean we're always going to get it right, obviously. That's why we need God as our Lord and Savior. transgender woman, you know, I want, you know, friendships, you know, with other women, heterosexual women, so I can bond with them in a heterosexual way, and, you know, I don't want to be the best heterosexual transgender friend I can be with them, you know, and, uh, You find out, you know, sometimes even they don't completely accept you as a 
women. Same with men, obviously. They seem to be the most obvious of them all. Because they seem to be, for the most part, it's been my experience, the most, I guess, close-minded. Uh, and they, you know, they'll treat me like a woman. Women friends, you know, when all women treat me like a woman. And, you know, these things kind of get to me and stress me out. I push so hard to make friends, but sometimes you just need to let the good Lord do his work in your lives. And, well, and obviously trying to control the uncontrollable in your life is not a good thing at all because you cannot control the uncontrollable. God's providence is in charge. He's in charge of it all. Do your part. He'll do his part. And uh, focus on him. Focus on him. It's all you can do and try to be the person that stands the moral high ground in your conduct, in your behavior, in your actions, in your personal and corporate life. And how do you deal with depression? Well, <clears throat> obviously seeking God will help, but, uh, you know, but uh, get on the right medications. If you have a chemical imbalance, that might help. But, uh, you know, it's not easy being who you are in society. Life's a hot mess, and you have to navigate it, navigate through it by seeking Him above God Almighty, your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because no matter how much people may reject you, He perfectly, unconditionally loves you and accepts you for who you are. And not more people can't do the same by showing godly love but you can you can be the one that makes the step to show godly love concern and so forth showing people that God loves you And, well, I'm pretty sure I wanted to, there's a lot more God wanted me to say concerning this, but uh, that'll have to do for this session. Of course, there's always much, much more found in that chapter, those two chapters. I found them very helpful to me, you know strange way being a they spoke to me and I wasn't quite didn't quite get it at first how God was speaking to me on that and then it made sense to me and I hope that message especially dealing with my transgender issue being a transgender woman a heterosexual transgender woman uh you know, I was really depressed, really down and out because of negative evil spirits, demonic evil spirits by uh, who knows what, where, from, what. They're going to attack you. And I found that very helpful in my life. And did some cheering me up. So I hope it uh, will speak to you some awesome way um, 
Dear Heavenly Father, we ask you to hide these words in our hearts and minds and empower us to put into practice these truths. Personalize these truths and put them into practice in Christ Jesus' name. We ask for the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, <clears throat> grant us, O oh God, that your holy and life giving spirit may so move every human heart, especially the hearts of these the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicion disappear, hatred cease, and that our divisions being held, we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ, O Lord. We ask Christ Jesus' name through the power of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, you proclaim your truth in every age by many voices drafted in our tongue. We pray those who speak for listen and write what many read that they may do their part in making the hearts of this people wise, its minds sound, its will righteous to the honor of Jesus Christ the Lord. We pray and ask in Christ Jesus' name, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you until next time, dear. Ladies and gentlemen, cisgender and transgender, gay, lesbian, Christian brothers and sisters in the faith.